the inspiratory expiratory time ratio or the IE ratio. So let's talk about the IE ratio in regards to mandatory modes of ventilation. So these are the continuous mandatory modes of ventilation, CMV, and also to mandatory breaths. That could be part of SIMV also. And this could include volume control in both of these, pressure control in both of these, and dual control in both of these. However, not only mandatory breaths will affect the IE ratio, but spontaneous triggered breaths or initiated breaths are going to affect the IE ratio in your mandatory modes. So I'm not really going to get into that in this video, but in another following video, I'm going to talk about how spontaneous triggered breaths affect my IE ratio and my expiratory time. So specifically, what is my IE ratio? So what is it? So this is just another screenshot of ventilator waveforms. And I like to use the waveforms to explain stuff because that's what we mostly see in the ICU. We analyze the waveforms and we can get a lot of information diagnostically with these waveforms. And basically it is the ratio of the inspiratory time to the expiratory time. So if we look at this phase, this whole So here's one phase, and I'm going to split it up. I'm just going to change my colors here. Uh, we'll use red or pinkish. So this component is my inspiratory time or my inspiratory phase on this side. and my expiratory phase or expiratory time is this part of the breath cycle. So the, just the ratio between these two is my IE ratio. And that kind of looks sloppy, so that might have, hopefully didn't confuse anybody more. And IE ratio is important to know if the patient has enough time for inspiration and expiration, both for adequate lung filling and adequate lung emptying. So how does one set a IE ratio? So on some ventilators, there is actually a setting for IE ratio. And if we look at all my ventilator settings, there's actually a setting for IE ratio. So since it's a setting, this that the upper set sorry, that the operator sets, it's going to stay constant. So no matter what I do with my respiratory rate, so if I change my respiratory rate, if I increase it, or if I decrease the setting, it's not going to affect this IE ratio at all. What it does affect, though, is it affects my inspiratory time right here. So if this is the IE ratio is fixed, I increase or decrease my respiratory rate is going to affect my inspiratory time, but also kind of what's hidden is it's However, a lot of people do not even set an IE ratio anymore. So here's an example of another ventilator. Now this is an older ventilator and there's still a lot of these baby logs out here and you'll notice there's not an IE ratio setting here either. However, what we, we have here is a inspiratory time and an expiratory time. And between these two, this creates my I to E ratio based on these settings. And these settings are actually used also to 
the combination gives me a frequency. Uh, here's another example. If we look at my settings over here, there's not a setting for an IE ratio. However, to change the IE ratio, so if we look at our smart window over here in this section, I can see a IE ratio. However, that is comprised of my respiratory rate setting and also my inspiratory time percent setting. So manipulating one of these is going to affect my IE ratio. Now, normal IE ratio settings is usually 1 to 2 IE ratio to 1 to 3. However, we shouldn't be setting an inspiratory time or inspiratory time percent basically to achieve this IE ratio. We can have this as a default, but the best way to see if your IE ratio is correct is to evaluate your ventilator waveforms. So this is a screenshot and this is pressure control in pressure control CMD. Since I do not have a set tidal volume, my tidal volume is going to be affected by my IE ratio. And that is due to alveolar filling time and enough expiratory time. So how do we use our waveforms to evaluate IE ratio? I'm just going to erase this. So what we want to do to make sure that our IE ratio is correct or that our inspiratory time because mostly we're focused on setting an inspiratory time, is again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna evaluate my flow waveform. Flow is a very diagnostic waveform, probably the most diagnostic waveform. And I probably say that because I pretty much use pressure control all the time. Or adaptive pressure control. So when I use those modes, my flow is gonna be the most diagnostic. So if I look at my flow waveform, which I kind of squared off, highlighted, and the flow waveforms are in red, I can see that my expiratory time or my expiratory component of my IE ratio is adequate. Because as you notice, my flow fully returns to baseline. So that tells me that there is no air trapping at all. And if I wanted room, I could actually increase the respiratory rate because there's plenty of time for the patient to exhale. There's this whole phase here. Or what I really want to do is, uh, is to increase my inspiratory time because my flow is not fully decelerating. So the ideal inspiratory time would allow the flow to fully decelerate. So my inspiratory flow should also So to actually increase my inspiratory time, or my eye time, I would have to change my IE ratio. So say if I, my IE ratio was set to one to three, to allow for more eye time, I'd actually change that to a one to two. And then titrate my IE ratio, or my inspiratory time, and constantly evaluate these waveforms. That's the importance of IE ratio.